Hello, welcome back. In last episode, in last episode, we created this uh, this camera, and I did that because I kind of wanted to get a feel for the motion, um, because I'm actually kind of thinking in terms of it being a dragon or something similar. Uh, but if you were wondering how to get the nice crisp motion that you get here, uh, that's just a matter of making it so that instead of rotating around. Um, here when you do the vertical. Instead of using transform.up, if you use vector 3.up, and I can take this out, uh, you'll get a nice crisp motion. So that's probably what you actually want to use, and that's what I'll use for now. Um, and later on I will change it so that we can uh, use the more dragony motions when we have an actual dragon. Uh, for now this will work fine. So in this episode we're going to work on placing things and for that we need things to place. So for now let's go ahead and just use a box. So here is a bog standard cube. Um, let's call it thing we place and uh, let's make it some particular shape like uh, 5 by 5 by 20. And let's put it inside of our cursor object, like so. Um, make sure it's in the middle of the cursor object. And the empty cursor, we can hide it for now. Later on, we're going to do some more stuff with it. So you can see that we have this problem where it zooms towards us, and that's because it has the collision still attached to it, the box collider. So we disable that and it'll float around fine. So really what we're going to be doing is when we want to place it, we want to make it so that the box collider um, gets re-enabled when we place it. So that the next time we place something it'll be on top of that. So let's go ahead and do exactly that. But first off, uh, we're going to go ahead and turn on shadows. This should be available to you even if you are using uh, a free Unity. Alright, so back here in cursor we're going to say uh, if we hit something, then um, like so. We're making this its own function because it's got a lot of stuff in it. So we're going to say if input dot mouse button down zero. That means if we left click, then we're going to go ahead and place an object. So here, let's go ahead and make a public game object to place. Or, uh, let's make it called object to place. We'll probably rename it something less stupid later. Or maybe not. Those things tend to, tend to stick. Thank you, Mono. So here we're going to use a, a trick where we instantiate an instantiated object. And the reason for that is because um, there we are. And the reason for that is just because it'll create a duplicate. We won't have to worry about what prefab we're working with. And this will allow us to go ahead and make our object to place a non-prefab. For example, something that's been built complicatedly. Uh, in inside of that particular editor, uh, which I'll show you much, much later. So we've just instantiated the object, and the only other thing we have to do is make it so that the um, uh, collider... Uh, what is it using? Right now we're using a box collider. Let's go ahead and remove that... Um, We're going to want to use mesh colliders for all this stuff. Mesh collider. There it is. So now I've added a mesh collider. I'm going to disable the mesh collider. There we go. So, we hit play. Oh, the mesh collider got re enabled. Oh, because there's. 
I don't understand. What's going on here? Oh, is it that the mesh collider, even when disabled, it is... Oh, um, well, one of the problems is we forgot to actually put it in the as the game object to place here. But the mesh collider seems to be working even when it's disabled, which is um, annoying. So what we're going to do is we're going to manually change that in the code right here by uh, So the first thing we need to do is we actually need to delete the object that we currently are placing, but we can on we only want to delete it if it exists <laughs> and if it isn't the thing we're actually setting, because if we delete the thing that we're setting, we're going to be deleting it before we get to set it, and then, then you'll end up with an empty cursor. So when we do this, we're going to have to go ahead and change it here, here. And then up here, we just say set object to place, object to place. There we go. Nope, the mesh collider seems to be um, rigorously insisting that it should stay on all the time. Is it not enabled? Is there something else? Let me go ahead and look it up. All right, well, that's fun. It turns out you can't disable a mesh collider. Um, they are just always enabled. Uh, so we have a couple of options here. One of the options is that we could uh, tell the physics, or we could delete it and then recreate it, but that's kind of annoying and it'll cost us time for complicated meshes. And the other thing we can do is we can tell the physics to ignore it. So let's go ahead and try that. Looks like we have to... Um, yeah, it looks like we have to put it on a layer, so let's go ahead and uh, set that up here in... Uh, let's put it in camera controls, because we only want it to happen once. Ignore layer collision. Uh, actually, I don't know whether that's going to work or not. I'm kind of still stumbling around a little bit here, but I wanted you to see that it's not all it's not all perfect, easy stuff. All right, so the first thing we need to do is we need to change the layer from default to ignore raycast. Ignore ignore raycast is layer two. Let's go ahead and see whether or not that's inherently yeah okay. So it, the physics is actually already set up to ignore physics on that to to do to ignore the layer that's labeled ignore raycast. So we don't need to worry about that. Um, uh, and we don't need this uh, crazy gibberish. This is all just stuff we no longer need or care about, and we shouldn't have written it in the first place, and I feel very sad. So we just change the layer. Like so. So now when we hit click, you can see that we built it, and if we click, 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 click. stacked up nicely. Now you will notice that um, they don't stack up edge to edge and the reason for that is because we put the center of the brick at the point of the collision and the point of the collision is up the surface so what we would actually need to do is we need to add in some amount of normal or something like that but we're not going to do that yet because we're actually going to be start we're going to use next episode we're going to start using hard points and hard points are going to make that um, irrelevant. Uh, but we're not ready to use hard points just yet because this episode already went on for too long and was annoying. Uh, also, we're going to change it so that they're not all individual objects. 
um, but that also will have to wait. Uh, this is actually a really inefficient way to do things because each game object uh, takes its toll and um, after you reach about 300 or so uh, the uh, uh, Unity starts to get persnickety. I guess it can probably handle maybe two or three thousand if you're on a, good, a decent computer, but we're not. We're talking about something that should run on any computer.